Thanks for joining us on EMN5 today. I wanted to discuss the approach to tachyarrhythmias today. This is a pretty big subject, so I apologize if I run over five minutes, but I think it's an important um, subject, and I wanted to talk today mostly about how to organize your thought process when you're looking at a tachyarrhythmia. So first, just to mention, uh, tachyarrhythmia is going to be a heart rate of greater than 100. There are a couple different causes of this. Um, one is an increased automaticity, so you're going to have a normal pacemaker that's going too fast. Another reason would be a triggered activity, so this is an ectopic pulse that's triggering a, a different rate. And then there's the reentry uh, category. This can either be accessory pathways or retrograde impulses. So that said, this is kind of the stuff I want to go over about today. Um, I want to go through a thought process of questions to ask yourself in order to categorize the tachyarrhythmia you're looking at. I feel like usually you look at a rhythm and it's fast and you start to panic and your heart rate goes up and this is uh, something to kind of slow yourself down and talk yourself through it. And the other thing is even if you can't identify specifically what the rhythm is you're looking at, this is a way that you can speak intelligently to our cardiology um, consults and not just you know say that it's fast and you're not quite sure what it is this is a good way of explaining it so that they can understand what you're looking at so these are the questions I want you to ask yourself as you're going through first what is the rate today we're talking about tachyarrhythmias so they're always going to be tachycardic next split in the road is going to be your wide or your narrow complex that's where it's important to look at your QRS you want to see if it's less than or greater than 120 next is the rhythm does it appear to be regular or irregular in nature. And lastly, look at the P waves. Questions to ask yourself under the P waves are first, are there P waves or do you see some other kind of atrial activity such as flutter? Next, look at the P wave in relation to the QRS. Does it come before, after, during, does it seem to be related at all? And lastly, um, compare the P waves across your rhythm strip. Do they all look the same or there's, is there some variation? So this is a chart I put together to kind of go through the steps. We're going to keep coming back to this. So first, this whole section is for tachyarrhythmias, heart rate greater than 100. Next, as I said, you're going to have your narrow and your wide complexes. So that's less than uh, 120 is going to be your narrow. That will be a supraventricular arrhythmia. Or wide, which is greater than 120, which is going to be your ventricular rhythms. Next, as I said before, you're going to have your uh, regular and irregular splits. And I wrote down a differential here for each one in these categories. Um, the wide is a lot easier, that's mostly going to be your VTAC and VFib. And then lastly, you're going to look at your P waves to decide which of each of these under the category you're looking at. So first, let's just look at the narrow section here. So this is just the narrow branch I was talking about. And under the, uh, I have our differential here along with each of the P wave qualities, characteristics of each of these rhythms that you're going to be looking for. And I know this is complex, this is something to you know, print out, keep in your pocket, but this is the way you can kind of start thinking about these rhythms. So I just want to go through an example essentially of each one of these. Again, I took all these examples from Amal Machu's ECGs for the emergency physician in the book one, and uh, down in the corner under the ECGs they'll say which uh, case I'm looking at in case you want to go back and follow along. So first, let's start with the sinus tachycardia. I have all the answers down here at the bottom, but if you want to follow along, you can try to find each of these characteristics in the EKG above. So this is an example of sinus tachycardia. You're going to first look for your the fact that it's a narrow complex and it's regular. Next, look at the P waves. So we do see a P wave here before every QRS. Another thing to look at here is the access. So the P waves should be up in 1, 2, and AVF and down in AVR. So here's up in 1, 2, and AVF, and uh, down in AVR. And that's mostly important because of the next one I'm going to show you, which I'm just going to go back to the chart here real quick. So next will be atrial tachycardia, which is going to be an ectopic atrial pacer. So you're still going to have 1 to 1 P waves before your QR QRS, but it will have, um, your axis is going to be kind of strange because it's coming from a different location. So here's the atrial tachycardia with an ectopic pacer. In here, you do again have the P waves before each QRS, but let's take a look at the axis. So it should be up in 1, 2, and AVF, which is uh, down here in this one, How, in a sinus tachy. However, you see that it's down in 2 and AVF. You have a down going P wave, and you actually have it up in AVR, which again would be the opposite um, of a sinus tachycardia. Next, let's take a look at a flutter. 
In this one, I just do want to point out, I have it listed under regular. However, it can look irregular if your black is variable. So if you have it rotating between like a two to one and three to one, it can look irregular. So just to make, that's why I have the dotted line in that chart. It can look like both. So your atrial rate is gonna be at 300, and that's gonna be the sawtooth pattern that you're gonna see. So here in the rhythm strip, you can see that sawtooth, that should be at a rate of about 300. And then I just wanna point out, this is a, a great example in case 36 of the book that shows an example of each one of the ratios. So in a two to one, you should have a rate of 150. And that's kind of the classic that you talk about. So I'm just gonna look at this rhythm strip at the bottom. Here you have it conducting every other one. And so your rate is uh, 150 right here. Then it also has an example of a three to one next right here. So you have it conducting every third beat. So here's a one, two, and the third conducts. And that should be a rate of 100 um, between these two QRS complexes. And then lastly, here's an example of a four to one. If you have only four to ones, you should have a rate of about 75. So 75 between uh, these two complexes. So here you have a one, two, three, and the fourth one conducts. Uh, so that's a really nice example because it shows one of, it, one of each. And lastly, I want to look at the AV and RT complexes. So these are going to be your accessory pathways and reentrant pathways. And just to note, a lot of times this whole category is listed as SVT. Be aware that all of these rhythms are SVT, but a lot of times, you know, when you're talking to other people, keep that in mind. So let's go through an example of that. So here's an example of an AV NRT or SVT, as I was saying, it's many times referred to in case 27 of the book, which is uh, tachycardia. It's narrow complex, it's regular. And this one, the P waves are actually retrogrades. They can either be before, during, or after the QRS complex. Here we're seeing them after. What my two points out in the book is best seen in this example in uh, two, here's three, and AVF. You can see those P waves coming in after the QRS. So that's an example of that retrograde pathway. So next I want to go to the uh, irregular section of this. So we're going to have AFib and multifocal atrial tachycardia. So here's an example of atrial fibrillation in RVR, so tachycardic, taken from an example in uh, case 48 of the book. So here you can see you have a narrow complex tachycardia. It can be wide if you have a bundle branch block, but here's an example of a narrow complex. And this is your classic irregularly irregular rhythm. There should be no P waves that you see with this. Here's an example of multifocal atrial tachycardia. This is also an irregular rhythm. You will see P waves in this one, unlike atrial fibrillation. So that's the main difference between the two. And there will be a P wave before every QRS. The difference here is that there are more than one morphology for the P waves because they're coming from multiple ectopic pacemakers in the heart. So I tried to point out some different morphologies here. And so you can see in red, I tried to point out these P waves all kind of look the same, and then you have the green ones, those all kind of look the same, and um, the blue. So hopefully I pointed out those correctly. In this, you can see that there are P waves before every QRS, however, they all look a little bit different, and it's in a regular rhythm. That would all be consistent with multifocal atrial tachycardia. So now we've covered our narrow supraventricular rhythms that you're going to be looking for. Next, I want to go to the other side, which is going to be your wide QRSs. So here's the differential for a wide complex tachycardia QRS greater than 120, which is going to be a ventricular rhythm. Under the regular category, you have VTAC and VFib. And then also, I wanted to point out, under both the regular and irregular, you're going to have SVT with embarrancy. That essentially means that any of these under the supraventricular uh, narrow complex tachycardias that we talked about before, if any of these have some aberrancy, for example, a bundle branch block, they're going to look wide. So always think of that. It can be a VTAC, VFib, or any of these in the supraventricular category that have aberrancy. So let's go through an example of each of these. So here's an example of VTAC. It's going to be a wide complex tachycardia, and it should be very regular. If you're not sure if this is an SVT with aberrancy, or there's any question in the emergency room with the patient population that we get, it is 95% of the time going to be VTAC, and you should treat it like VTAC. So one thing to look at here is that there is AV dissociation, 
meaning that the P waves are independent of the QRS. In this example, um, which is case 13, you can best see it in lead 2 and in uh, V1. There are um, P waves that are independent of that QRS complex, which you won't see as much with the SVT with the Berenci. The best way to look for this and determine if it's a VTAC or an SVT with a variant C is find an old EKG where it's not tachycardic and see if there is a bundle branch block in that old EKG. So here's an example of SVT with a variant C with a right bundle branch block. Again, you should always treat it like VT if you're not sure. And if you don't see P waves, that would be more consistent with SVT. So again, this is the differential you're looking through, and I want to encourage you to always go through uh, this category of questions, asking yourself to get to that differential. Things to remember from this lecture, always use an algorithm. It's okay, whether it's in your head or on a piece of paper. And if you're not sure what you're looking at, just use those descriptors that we talked about to describe what you're looking at so you can communicate effectively with the cardiology consult. And lastly, these are the questions again to ask yourself. First, think about the rate. Next is an narrow wide complex. Is the rhythm regular or irregular? And then take a look at those P waves and describe them. Again, references from today is make sure and check out that book by Amalma 2, ECGs for the Emergency Physician. Thanks for joining us today on EMN 5.